Good evening. I'm Rachel Maddow, and for Keith Olbermann, this is Tuesday, July 8th, 119 days until the 2008 presidential election. Even though Senator Obama has not changed his position on when and under what circumstances our troops could come home from Iraq, Senator McCain won the first round of the spin war on that issue, convincing most of the media for most of a long weekend news cycle that Obama had flip-flopped on Iraq. But in our fifth story on the countdown, round two is about to get a lot trickier for the presumptive Republican nominee. McCain said four years ago, quote, it's obvious that we would have to leave Iraq if the Iraqi government asked us to do so. Well, asking us to do so is exactly what the Iraqi government has now done. An Iraq flip-flop in the making for the man who would be president. Right. Yesterday, as we reported, the Iraqi prime minister said the U.S. should either agree to pull out of Iraq or agree to a timetable for pulling out. The Bush administration's public response to Maliki? He said, what about who now? I'm paraphrasing that. The State Department's spokesman suggested that Maliki might merely have been misquoted or, or mistranslated. Wishful thinking, as it turns out. Iraq's national security advisor today reiterated Maliki's point. Quote, we will not accept any memorandum of understanding that doesn't have specific dates to withdraw foreign forces from Iraq. End quote. That seems clear. So now do we get to leave? According to 2004 John McCain, we do. Back in April of that year at the Council on Foreign Relations, McCain was asked the then hypothetical question of what the U.S. should do if a sovereign Iraqi government asked us to leave, even if we were unhappy about the security situation there. McCain answered. It's obvious that we would have to leave um, because if it, if it was a elected government uh, of Iraq, you know, we've been asked to leave other places in the world. Um, if, if it were an extremist uh, government, and I think we would have other challenges, but I don't see how we could uh, stay when our whole emphasis and policy has been based on turning the Iraqi government over to the Iraqi government. A second and final question for me. As you know, but, but I find it, if we do it right, that's not going to happen. But we will be there militarily for a long, long, long time. A long, long, long time. This morning, here on MSNBC, Senator McCain was asked about Prime Minister Maliki's demand that the U.S. at least make plans to go home. The Iraqis have made it very clear, including meetings I had with the President and Foreign Minister of Iraq, that it's based on conditions on the ground. That's what I've always said. I've always said we'll come home with honor and with victory and not through a set timetable. Uh, those same media outlets, by the way, were saying two weeks ago that Maliki said there would be no status of forces agreement. Look, he's a politician. He is a leader of a country that's finally coming together. There is no uh, reason to assume that the Iraqis aren't going to act in what they perceive as their national interests. I believe we'll act in ours, and I believe we'll come home, we'll withdraw, but the fragile vic the victory that we've achieved so far is fragile and has to be dictated by events in the situation on the ground. Al-Qaeda is back on their heels. They're not defeated. So to sum up, we have to fight the terrorists there so we don't have to fight them here. The Iraqi prime minister is just a politician who might yet come to his senses. And it's the media's fault for reporting what Mr. al-Maliki has said previously. Senator Obama today voiced his frustration with the notion that he, not his opponent, has been flip-flopping on Iraq. He said, quote, the people who say this apparently haven't been listening to me, end quote. For anyone who still believes the falsehood that Senator Obama has changed his position on Iraq, this next soundbite, we believe, is addressed directly to you. So when I hear John McCain saying, we can't surrender, we can't wave the white flag, nobody's talking about surrender. We're talking about common sense. We cannot be there forever. We can't be there for 50 years. We can't afford it. Our military families can't bear that burden. We've got to get more troops into Afghanistan. I am going to bring this war to an end. So don't be confused. I will bring the Iraq war to a close when I'm president of the United States of America. Lots to get to tonight with MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman, also the senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Thanks for joining us, Howard. Hi, Rachel. The McCain campaign says Senator Obama flip-flopped on Iraq, even though that isn't true, uh, and that allegation drives the news cycle for an entire holiday weekend. Then McCain himself gets caught in an actual reversal of his Iraq position, and barely a blip anywhere, at least not yet. Uh, what do you think is going on here? <laughs> 
Well, I think the second blip is going to grow. Mm. But as to the first, I think a couple things. First of all, Rachel, uh, from talking to some of Obama's people, they recognize that the focus is on him. In a way, he is the front runner. He's the top dog now, in a way, and everything he does and says gets very close scrutiny. Number two, I think the media was primed, Rachel, for uh, other signs, so to speak, of changes, of course, by Obama after a change on public financing and his controversy over supporting the FISA bill and so on. So they jumped on it, and they took that one word, refine, where he said he might refine, may possibly refine his tactics, and blew it up into a big thing that required Obama then to hold a second news conference. And paradoxically, I think sec holding the second news conference seemed to somehow uh, uh, confirm the uh, interpretations of the first. I think he's righted himself on this one pretty much now, though, especially with those kind of clips like the one you just played. It has been interesting to watch the Obama campaign uh, talk more and more about Afghanistan and even Pakistan, while the McCain campaign has tried to keep the focus on Iraq. I mean, they want to keep the focus on national security generally, but specifically on Iraq. Do you think that on the substance here, the Iraqi government wanting a timetable for withdrawal now, does that upend the presidential politics here? Problem for John, as you played the clip of his previous marks, uh, also in a way, the more he argues that the surge has worked, uh, has the paradoxical effect of, uh, of in a way, proving, uh, proving uh, Barack Obama's point, which is time to wind things down, especially now if the Maliki government is saying, hey, we want a timetable too. So if the Maliki government wants a timetable and wants American troops out for the most part, if that's what Obama is proposing, then where does that leave John McCain, especially as things are getting more serious in Afghanistan? That's the big problem in Pakistan that most planners and most military officials are worried about now. Howard, uh, you said that you think that um, Obama is sort of beating maybe the flip-flop allegation, that he's gotten out ahead of the allegation that uh, he has been back and forth in his position on Iraq. Uh, to the extent that the McCain campaign is able to keep this alive, to the extent they're able to keep going back to this narrative, and the media still looks for more facts to try to cram into this story that Obama is moving right, that he's changing his positions, how right. should Obama combat that? I mean, he can paint, I haven't flip-flopped on the side of his bus, but I mean, McCain's campaign has been playing the media better. They have successfully sold this idea so far. How should Obama combat it? Well, I think one thing he's got to do is, uh, is make himself uh, a little more accessible. I, I know uh, that he, he does do press avails and he's out there. Uh, but I think he's a very good explainer. Nobody makes his case better for himself than he does, in my view. And I think now that he's sort of gotten his, uh, his house pretty much in order for the fall campaign, which is what I think they're doing right now in advance to try to do all of this stuff before the, the focus really comes in the fall, uh, he just needs to get out there and keep explaining and, uh, and keep hoping that, uh, that he doesn't feed the media beast anymore on this, on this storyline. And I think it's quite possible that he won't after this. Howard Feynman of MSNBC and Newsweek, many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Rachel.